So you've just bought a 3D printer and you already want to throw it out the window. Fear not, let's make this fun. My name is Bryn Martins from Netron Technologies and Zen Filament has asked me to lay it down when it comes to 3D printing. All right, cool guys, so we're in Cura. Um, I've set up my Creality in the 3 printer by just the default setup. Um, by default, they all come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And that's great. Um, on this tab here, we can see um, where we'll start the slicing process. So what we'll do here now is we'll have, we have to first add the first model to, to be know what we're doing in here. So I've already put a file in here before this video. So here's a cube that I had in the last video. I think in the previous video, video it was 30 moles by 30 moles. We could scale it, rotate, and move it on this left-hand panel here. So let's click standard quality. So in this section here, we will start to talk about all the different you know, crazy tabs that are here. By default, it'll be on basic selection. So this is what you'll see when you first install Cura. Uh, first thing we'll look at is quality. There's a lot more settings than this if you click this fancy button here, and we will get to that later. But um, right now, we're just gonna stick with the basic settings because we just wanna get up and going. So quality. Uh, this is your layer height, and that is the resolution, the basic resolution of your model. You get uh, 0 0.12, you get 0 0.16, 0 0.2, 0. I think 3 or 0 0.28. Um, 0 0.2 is your standard quality. In fact, Cura comes with a few presets. You can see standard quality, it says there, and you can change from super quality, dynamic, low quality. Um, if you want something to do really quickly and you don't really care about the quality, you can use the low, low quality. It'll have less... Um, fine resolution but for, for me I always love uh, 0 0.2 it's a good medium between really good and kind of bad quality so 0 0.2 is a great layer height to start with uh, walls so your wall thickness is always going to be how many perimeters each print has so a wall thickness is always a multiplier of your nozzle <clears throat> so wall thickness is always a multiplier of your nozzle and the way this works is that if I have a wall thickness of 0 0.8, you would imagine that 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle would give me two walls. And it's pretty, it will do that calculation for you. For example, if I wanted three walls, I can make my wall thickness uh, 1.2 uh, millimeters and automatically puts the wall count as three. Because you can imagine that a nozzle, a printer can only print, uh, extrude out a thickness uh, diameter as big as the nozzle would be, right? So that's exactly how that works. So all right, cool, but uh, 0 0.8 is a really good place to be. So 0 0.8 at two walls is perfectly fine. Your next will be your top and bottom layers, and this is the top, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, to be honest, it's top and your bottom layer. Why you would want a thick top layer is because if it's too thin, then you will see the infill through the bottom. Um, it'll just, you want one, one or two layers, it might not be thick enough. Bottom um, thickness, also same thing, but remember, you don't want too many layers. Too many layers might, might take a while. Uh, so if you have a, a large surface area apart, you can imagine that uh, it's going up and down like that so many times. It will just take it will just take a long time. So um, again, your bottom uh, top and bottom thickness is a multiplier of your layer height. So if our layer height is 0 0.2, you can imagine that the top thickness and bottom thickness, you know, would equate to how many layers that would be. So uh, for example, if we're going to go with four here. If we're going to go with a, um, a top thickness of 0 0.8, that would equate to four layers, so two, four, six, eight. I mean, it makes perfect sense. So if I go, if I want one mil, you can imagine it's going to be five top layers and, and so on and so forth. So it's just reset that back to default, reset, reset. So the, the zero, four, four top layers and four bottom layers is more than enough for most prints. Your infill, again, your infill is now how much of the model is infilled with plastic. And this is a calculation that a that Cura will actually do for you. So if you say, hey, uh, this cube is really cool. I want this thing to be 20% uh, filled with plastic. And you can select your infill pattern. And most, you can play around with all these different types. Some of them are more beneficial than others. For this particular video and this model, a cubic pattern is perfectly fine. And I'm going to show you an example of this right now. If I say slice, and then I go to the prepare mark. And you can see there's our model. Let's close this tab here. And if we cycle through each layer, you'll see there's all your infill there. This is a pretty self-explanatory way of doing things. Um, but So <clears throat> that's how that works. And you can, just, you can see that if I go back to pr prepare and I change this to 80%, uh, say slice, and you'll see how this changes. 
You'll see how this changes the time as well. Two hours, uh, almost double than what the previous one did. So if we go back to preview, uh, you can see the infill pattern is really, really dense. Like that's really nuts actually. It's almost solid at that point. So um, not, not, not recommended. Usually around uh, f f 10 to 20% is a really good mark for, for infill. So I'm gonna leave that at 15%. Um, let's just slice that so we can go out, get that out the way. All right, go back to prepare. Next thing we have is material, and this is where we'll set our temperatures. There are a lot, other, there are a lot more settings in this category as well that I'm not going to get to in this video, but uh, printing temperature is very important for 3D printing. Depending on the brand of filament you use, it will range between, especially for PLA, it'll range between 200 and 225. Uh, obviously, with Zen PLA Ultra, perfect temperature is 220 for us. Uh, this is actually a print done with their sunset swirl. It's a gradient filament that they're bringing out now. Um, it'll fade between colors, which is super cool. And um, this is done at 220. The bull plate temperature is 60 to 60, 60 to 65. Should be should be fine as well. Make sure you're using the right temperature range for your branded filament. That's really important. So your speed by default, most air creality machines or most Cartesian based machines will be at around 50, 55 and 60 millimeters per second by stock. You can tune it to be a little bit faster depending on what firmware is on there. Um, for example, the Delta machines, I've seen guys print some insane things at insane speed. So I think I saw a machine that did 150 millimeters per second. Like it was just, it's actually scary to watch, but yeah, depending on the machine you have, you can tweak this and go up and down. You will sacrifice quality for speed because when things are moving quickly like that, inertia comes into play and you'll start to get a lot of ringing and vibration and uh, your print quality will sacrifice a little bit, but it's kind of a risk you have to take there for speed. Next is travel. So travel, when we talk about travel, we're talking about um, retraction. We're talking about stringing mainly. Uh, this is what that does. So, well, there's actually a lot of settings here, but I'm going to talk about stringing mainly here for retraction. If you're experiencing a lot of, um, uh, where's an example? I don't really have one. So, if we talk, if, if you have a lot of stringing in a uh, in a print, whereby you have two points in the print and a gap in the middle, if we if it starts to print there and then it moves over to the next side over here, the gap between you'll have these strings and these lines that happen. That's all based on um, the filament still remaining after it started to move and it'll basically pull it along just very similar to how a glue gun if you use a glue gun and then you move the glue gun after you see that string across your desk so very similar concept how we get around that is we do something that's known as retraction and that is where the extruder motor over here a little print on it this will move backwards very quickly just before it starts to travel um, which will suck the filament back up the nozzle trying to make a bit of a vacuum and cut that filament that, that excess filament off before it moves as it gets back to the location, or as it gets to the location where it's supposed to be, um, the extruder will then extrude just enough to meet it back at the nozzle again and carry on extruding at the right point. Um, there are two main settings when it comes to retraction. It's retraction speed or retraction distance. If you want to find those settings, you can actually just click the settings button here. You'll see this list of just insane amount of options Cura has implemented these days. And you can type in uh, retraction speed. We'll see a retraction speed. We can expose it there. We can also re uh, enable retraction distance and uh, retraction distance. There it is. And now they're exposed as well. So by default, they're 5 and 45. Um, you can play around with these if you are experiencing any um, retraction uh, issues at all. Uh, next, we have uh, Z-Hop when retracted. So this also helps a lot. What this will do is, though, you're, if you're printing, your filament will jump. Your filament. <clears throat> when you're printing, your hot end will actually jump up. Uh, and retract at the same time and then it will move and come back down again and then re-extrude so it jumps up before it moves instead of just moving across that jump up sometimes is enough to actually sever that uh, excess filament that's there so when it starts printing again you've got no more stringing just be careful though to retraction speed too high and fraction distance distance too high will cause under extrusion um, if you get to that point you know it's a little bit too much and we need to back off a bit there. So that's all perfectly fine. I'm going to enable that. That's great. Uh, and then we have cooling. So cooling is uh, your part cooling is from your left hand is the fan that comes from the left or the right of your extruder. That will basically cool the part 24 seven and all it, when it needs to. Uh, with PLA, the faster you can cool the layer, the faster you can put the next layer on it. So that's pretty much the rule of thumb for PLA. Uh, supports. So if you're not familiar what support is, not all models can be printed just as is. 
for example, this dragon here. Luckily, this dragon never used support, but uh, what, this will, what this will do is that if you have support placement placed everywhere, Cura will try to look for any overhang greater than 50 degrees. I think by default it's 45 degrees. Um, greater than 45 degrees, and it will try and build a scaffolding from that from the model underneath it to the point where it needs support. Um, if we had to put placement to just touching the bull platform, it will ignore anything that's from the model up to the model and will only use from the actual build platform up to the model. So if you can picture this nose kind of extending out further out there, um, this would need support and therefore it'll build it from the build platform up to the nozzle, this, the, up to the, the part. And this will help reduce the amount of plastic you need. Um, but yeah, if you can try and get away with, uh, with no supports on any print, number one. And this, for example, the angle on this print is just enough to not as for us to not need any support, which is really, really cool. Next thing is we have, so we did support already. Last thing is build, build plate for adhesion. So these are different methods you can use to keep the, the part to the bed whilst printing. Skirt, this blows my mind. Skirt, I don't know, man. It creates the skirt around the print and it does absolutely nothing. It is the dumbest setting I've ever seen by default on Cura. I don't know, man. I've been doing this for ages and uh, this I've never used skirts. Brim makes way more sense to me. Brim I uh, always use and it creates a, a skirt basically, but the skirt will then actually touch the model, increasing the surface area of it on the bed. This is a really, really good use uh, for uh, a bed adhesion tool. Brim is pretty much what the, the number one thing to use. Raft, I hate. Um, everyone knows that. Rafts are basically a, a small model that gets printed underneath the print, which uh, and the, which allows the print to be started on, so it doesn't print directly on the build platform. The problem with this is that it takes a long time, uh, it takes a lot of filament, and it also ruins the the look and, and then feel a look of the part underneath. If you were going for a really smooth finish on the bottom, you're gonna have this rough part that you've got to remove. Sometimes it doesn't come off. It's a nightmare. If you if you can help it, please don't use raft. And we don't really have any, we don't have a little extruder on this particular machine, so there's nothing there. So after we've done with that, um, we are prepared. We can just say slice, and that is it. So we have a model there. This will take an hour and seven minutes. We can click preview, and there it is. There is our model. Um, after we're done, happy with that, we just click save to disk, and we'll save that to our SD card, put our SD card in our machine, and we're ready to go. That's pretty much all that is to basic slicing. Um, there is another video after this that teaches you a little bit more about bed adhesion. If you haven't already watched that already, I'll go through kind of the basics on, on bed leveling. Um, so check that out if you haven't already. Make sure you like and subscribe to any of these videos if, it found, if you find it helpful. Uh, Zen is producing a few more videos that will uh, help with the beginning of 3D printing. Um, that's all from me, and I'll see you next time.